Located between Norway and mainland Scotland, Shetland Island has some of the most incredible landscapes in the UK. Arriving on an overnight ferry from Aberdeen, the island's capital Lerick seems like the ideal place to start. Lerick is Shetland's only town, with a population of about 7,500. With most of the sandstone buildings on the waterfront dating from the 18th century. In fact, the narrow main street still follows the old shoreline. The mornings are quiet, with not many people about. It's refreshing to see no chains here also, with all the local stores being independent. There's also no shortage of delicious food and coffee on offer. Once done with lunch, it was time to walk around the nab, a short hike around the point that also features a nine hole golf course. Just a few hundred yards from the street is Baines Beach. This beautiful and much photographed sandy beach is only accessible at low tide and is next to the Lodbury's. The Lodbury's are stone buildings which were constructed on the seafront by merchants in the 1700s. Nestled in the heart of Lerick is Fort Charlotte, the only surviving monument in Scotland linked to the Anglo-Dutch Wars. On the southwest of the town, step back in time at the Iron Age Brock, dating back 3,000 years. First occupied in the Bronze Age by a small oval house, which was later overtaken by a larger Brock. You can't visit the Shetland Island without visiting the Shetland Museum. Set on the waterfront within a restored 19th century dock, this fascinating museum tells the story of Shetland's heritage and culture. To explore the rest of the main island, you can either catch a local bus or do what I did, hire a car. First up I head east to the Jarslof prehistoric and Norse settlement one of the most important and inspirational archaeological sites in Scotland. This extraordinary site has a complex of ancient settlements which cover more than 4,000 years of human history.
can even hike to the lighthouse from here, but since I was driving, I decided against that. Sombra Lighthouse is the oldest lighthouse in Shetland and perhaps the most well known. Rising above the Sombra Head Cliffs at the southernmost point of mainland Shetland, the lighthouse is visible from land and sea for miles around. From here I head north and since we drive over the airport's runway, First, I needed a stop for traffic. Next stop was St. Ninian's Isle, one of the finest sand tumbleos in Europe and the largest active tumbleo in the UK. lunch, I stop off at the UK's most northern fish and chip shop for one of the best fish and chips I've ever had. After lunch, I waited for the rain to stop before heading to Strenis. The beach at Strenis has a ruined house or bod in the 1800s, the bod was a little house on the beach. But the end of fishing in the area meant that many people moved away and the houses and buildings were abandoned. To finish off the day, I head to the rugged cliffs of Eschenes and reveled in terms of sheer breathtaking beauty, geology and archaeology. The cliffs show a series of lava flows dating back millions of years to a landscapes of volcanoes, fire and lava. If you ever have the chance to come check out Shetland Islands, I highly recommend it, even if you only have a day. I wish I had more time here, it's so peaceful and full of outstanding natural beauty. I feel a week here would really recharge the batteries. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.